Hi, and welcome back to the Mega Bob. Today I'm going to introduce the new to me Beaver Bridgeport Clone Mill. And today we're going to look at how we got it into the workshop. This is the workshop before we moved it in. This is us after we've lifted it off the forklift and onto some 25mm round bar which we crowbarred the mill into place as you can see here. Now let's talk about the levelling feet. As you can see the mill moves around without levelling feet. So here's the idea, we drop a blank bar down into the hole and then we use a plug that will push down on that bar to level the mill. As you can see, the rock has been removed. Now, there is a pipe that has to be removed out of this one. So I'll just use a tap to get started. And I can pull it out. This is just some galvanized pipe. Next step is we need to thread the holes. So this is an M24 three millimeter pitch tap. This will be repeated on the other two holes at the rear of the machine. Unfortunately recording is very difficult. Now that we've tapped that hole, we'll just pull the old plug out and we'll just test the thread and make sure it's okay. And that fits well. So let's have a look what we need to make. Here's the bar, which will make 10 millimeters longer. And here's the plug. The plug is 40 millimeters long and we need an M24 by 3 millimeter pitch thread on it. Here we'll make the spaces out of this scrap round bar. Here I'm setting the bandsaw up to 140 millimeters. And we'll just quickly cut through three of these. Now that we've got all three of those bars, we'll switch over to the hex bar and create the studs. Just lining up this, the old stud to make the bandsaw cuts the same. With all of them cut, we'll head over to the lathe and work on these spacer bars. Here we're going to face both ends and put a slight chamfer so that there's no binding up in the hole. On this particular spacer bar, I just need to machine away some slag from where this is plasma cut off something like this.
off camera, I'll repeat this process for the next two bars. I find it always the case when you go to do something on a lathe that it is never set up in the way you need it. Here I have to change the angle of the cross slide because I had it set up for cutting a taper. I'll just have to find all the correct tools and, and get this done quickly. Now that is completed, it's time to work on the studs. Here I'm just doing a quick measurement so I get the correct flat for the hex bolt. Now, there's going to be a lot of chatter here because we're cutting hex bar on a small lathe. And one thing small lathes don't like is interrupted cuts. So we'll start off with facing. And here we go, turning the shaft. Now this is a 25mm flat to flat hex bar which is about a 27-28mm diagonal. It's times like this so I wish I had a bigger leg. Here I'm moving the cross slide just to try and make the system more rigid. Unfortunately, it doesn't really help. I have to take lighter and lighter cuts. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't get rid of any of the chatter. This is only 1214 steel, leaded steel, pretty machining steel, and it's chattering like crazy. I'll have to strip down the machine and, and check everything. Now we have it below 24 millimeters, so at 23.93, I believe. We will put in the drill tail stop and start the die. Now we're only going to start the die on here, and then we're going to move over to a vise where we can get a lot more torque on the die itself. Unfortunately, all the vices that I have are mounted to benches that have wheels on them, so you'll see me fighting the bench here, trying to stop it from moving while I'm trying to get this die to thread this 24mm shaft. I'm not going to lie, this is a low effort. I went back and triple checked the measurement of the shaft. It is below 24mm, so we'll just keep going. So I've got these extra bars just to help us get a bit more torque onto it. And I eventually make my way down to the bottom of it. I'm not sure if this helps, but I like to do a couple of spring passes with the die just to make sure the thread's fully cut. Now, as I forgot to put in any thread runout, I'm having to go back to the lathe and add it in. This is so the stud will go all the way into the hole. And here we are, one finished stud. Now I repeated this two more times and now we have all four sets and it's time to install them.
thank you very much for watching and I'll upload a video of leveling the machine soon.